What is going on, everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Ronan Bell Show. I'm your host, Ronan Bell, and today with me is a young man who has defied all odds to get where he is today through hard work and perseverance. Please help me welcome to the show, Bendy Franks. What's up, everybody? Happy <laughs> to be here. Thanks for having me, Ronan. So before we go into anything else, um, let's just start with the basics. Where are you from? What do you exactly do you do? Yeah, so I'm actually from State College. I've lived here my entire life, believe it or not. Um, but now I'm obviously a sophomore at Penn State. I'm in the Smeal College of Business studying finance. And I also happen to play baseball for Penn State. So before we go into the whole story about your baseball career, um, what, let's talk about, let's go from the beginning. What was it like, what was baseball to you when you were just you know, before Little League, everything like that in high school, before you really stepped it up to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't actually start baseball until a little bit later than most kids do. I actually began when I was seven years old and most kids started t-ball when they're like three or four. Oh, right? yeah. uh, so everybody had, you know, a little bit of a jump on me, but that didn't mean I wasn't, I wasn't ready to go off the, <laughs> off the get go. So uh, I started training really hard in seventh grade uh, with my best friends David Shoemaker and Tyson Cooper who also plays with me on Penn State Baseball and we all went to the same high school um, and so that's where our friendship kind of really took off and you know if you chase your goals with people who have similar you know goals as you it'll make you go even farther in life and it makes it a lot easier to chase what you want um, so that's where we kind of found our, our passion and our hopes to play in college and you know now here here we all are and here <laughs> I am so so what was the moment you think that made you realize that man I'm like I'm falling in love with this game of baseball probably in the beginning of high school once I began to have a, some success uh, I realized you know I'm I'm only six foot two so my basketball career is not going to take <laughs> off uh, I, I wish I was taller or else I'd be playing basketball but. So, you know, I was a little bit realistic with my goals and I decided to go with baseball. Um, and something I really, really love about it is it's a sport that rewards the people who truly take it for what it is and take every day, you know, sink one day at a time. Because uh, it's a sport of failure, right? The best, the best in the entire world fail seven times out of ten. Um, and you want to talk about getting through some adversity daily. Uh, that's kind of where my mental game took off. You know, that's why I love it. Yeah, I mean, the game seems so simple. You know, you're just trying to hit a little white ball. I wish. Really. <laughs> I wish, man. <laughs> but so let's go back to the high school days. Like in high school, what was the main goal? Did you have any coaches recruiting you from there? Or was this kind of like, this is my mindset. This is the option. I'm just going to go do it. So I actually wanted to go anywhere except Penn State, to be entirely <laughs> honest. And that has nothing to do with Penn State itself. It's just since I've grown up here my whole life, I wanted to experience something different. Um, and so my parents, you know, have kind of been harping on that my whole life. And so I wanted to play Ivy League or basically anywhere with a great business school. Um, but that never really worked out, to be entirely honest. Uh, I had a few offers here and there, but from no-name schools, uh, nothing that really counted. And from the beginning, I was always in it for the academics. I was trying to use baseball as a way to get into a better academic school that I could not get into with just my, you know, my scores and everything like that. Um, you know, that didn't end up really working. So I eventually applied to 14 different schools to go to school as a regular student. Got rejected everywhere. So, you know, failure once again. <laughs> um, and so I ended up being forced to come to Penn State, but I'd say, I'd say I've made the most of it. So now let's get into the actual path of where you are today. So let's, I understand that you've had that a little bit different of a path than most baseball players out there. So can you tell the listeners out there exactly how you became a member of the baseball team? Yeah. Um, so Coach Cooper, at our senior night banquet, I was giving my speech and I had recently found out that I would be attending Penn State. And so I gave that speech and he came up to me after that speech, put his arm around me and asked me, you know, come, you know, you got nothing to lose. You might as well come try, right? Come try out. And so I started with the freshman, uh, the incoming freshman over the summer. Uh, I lived with them in a dorm downtown. So, you know, it made me feel like I did truly belong and was recruited. Uh, and so we did workouts over the summer and then we got to fall and we started going live with team practice and everything like that. Uh, and it started off slow to be honest and it's really hard being a walk-on because you're doing all the same amount of work and then some as all the, the players that have a spot on that team but there's no guarantee that you're going to have a spot on that team at the end of the year right so while you watch exactly. other regular students out in college and stuff having fun you're like man like that could be me uh stuff like that and you're not necessarily guaranteed 
uh, a spot on the Penn State baseball team, but uh, you know, I eventually really caught fire. I, I don't like to brag a whole lot, but <laughs> I, during the Blue White World Series, which is kind of like the Blue White Penn State football game, yeah. we did that for baseball too. Uh, I went five for seven and won MVP as a freshman, which is uh, you know pretty damn good. Bendy's pretty I'd decent say. at the sport for all the teams <laughs> out there. Nah, nah. So, uh, <laughs> You know, I just, I don't know, I figured it out. I think all my hard work, it finally all came together at once. Um, and I started to get hot and, you know, a little bit of confidence goes a long ways. Was there any really doubt about the decision that you made to try and walk on to school and kind of just see what happens? Hell no. <laughs> and here's why. Uh, one of my biggest mottos in life is you never want to regret anything, you know, never have any regrets, right? And so someone who shows up to something and tries is a thousand times more of a man than someone who never even shows up, right? Um, so I, I, you know, I was like, I'd rather know that I wasn't good enough to play than sit there and wonder the rest of my life, man, what if I would have tried out, what would have happened? That's um, awesome. I just wanted to, like for all the listeners out there, you know, even if you don't get these D1 offers, there's always a different path. It doesn't mean that you failed. Would you consider that you didn't get any of these D1 offers, that you failed for your high school career? Look, it does not matter how you get there. It matters if you get there. Um, you cannot take scholarships over you know, your own path and certain things like that. Um, there's a lot of people out there that get a scholarship that don't really work that hard and they, they take it for granted, right? I mean, there's so many other routes. There's JUCO, D3, D2, you can always transfer. I mean, walking on, it's it's really, really hard. It'd probably be easier to go JUCO and then try and walk on. Um, but I, I don't know, I took a pretty hard route, but that, that doesn't mean that the door isn't always open, so. Bendy's a very humble kid. This work, this kid works his absolute tail off and it doesn't matter. He won't, he won't say it out loud, but I just want all you guys to know out there that this kid, I have never seen a kid work harder than him. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> so let's go into some of the adversity that you had to overcome. Mm -hmm. You know, being a walk on, walking to Penn State, really not having a spot on the team yet. Is there anything you'd like to touch on about the adversity that you had to go through to get to the spot that you are today? Yeah, so we can start with high school. Um, being a kid with a lot of talk around him, uh, and never having an offer come your way, that's pretty hard. Um, and then so people start, you know, picking on you and stuff like that. Even some teammates would, you know, ask me like, man, where are you going? Like, you're not going anywhere. You can't say anything. Uh, so there's always that thought in the back of your head that like, man, I'm not getting recruited. Like that makes it really hard to keep pushing forward. Um, and it got really tough my senior year. And I think basketball is what saved me mentally because it gave me a chance to, you know, just play sports and, you know, have fun with it rather than just have an end goal in mind of achieving something. Um, but then, so getting to college, I think is where I faced the most adversity because as, as I said, there was no guarantee that I would be where I'm at today. Um, you have to earn a spot. So I, what I had to do is actually beat someone out to earn a spot over them, which means someone had to get cut. And it ended up being four kids actually got cut. Think, uh, which kind of, you know, opened up the spot for me. And I think I was very deserving of it. And most people would agree with me at that point. Uh, apparently they had a team meeting to vote about me making the team or not. I found out about that a month later. Um, apparently there was not a single no in the room. Um, so, but, but being a walk on the biggest adversity is, you know, you're doing everything that everyone else is doing and you're technically not on the team. Did the thought ever cross your mind that like, you're not going to make the team or like you didn't oh, yeah. really understand what the future holds. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, as I said, this fall started off slow for me. I mean, I probably didn't even have a single hit until pro day, which is uh, halfway through the fall season. Uh, and, you know, funny, 20 MLB scouts show up and I go two for three with two doubles. So, you know, it's kind of where it took off from there. Get some confidence <laughs> rolling, but... Uh, Showed up when it mattered. That's right. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's for sure. So, yeah, I don't know. So let's go through the day that, let's go through the days, let's go through the days that before that you were on the team. What was your typical day like? What was the grind like to get to where you are mm -hmm. now in the fall when you still didn't have that spot on the team? Right. Um, so do you want me to talk about high school? I, or, why don't we go into like, let's go, yeah, let's go well, from, let's start from high school right. and work our way So there. for the people listening who are still in high school, um, I wasn't necessarily the biggest before school lifter. Everybody likes to talk about, oh, I get up at 5 a.m., blah, blah, blah. Like, that's cool and all, but if you're missing on your sleep, like, 
it's hard to have a consistent daily schedule if you're always missing out mm -hmm. on sleep, right? So I would rather sleep in, or not sleep in necessarily, because you still go to school at 8 a.m., right? So high school, go to school. Uh, immediately, I would go out to uh, diamond baseball training, which is where I would lift. Uh, so I would lift for two hours, and then after that, I would have two-hour practice, which would basically take me until about sundown, around 8. Um, and then after that, I'd go home, you know, do homework from like 9 to midnight, and then go to bed and repeat. Um, I'm a big believer in sleep. I know everybody watches those motivational videos where it's like, oh, like get up at 4 a.m., grind when others are sleeping. Like I, I don't necessarily believe in that because you got to take care of your body, right? If you're an athlete, you're here to you're here to play a sport, um, and you know if you can't even do that, then you can't call yourself. Yeah, it's, an it's, it's no disrespect for the people that do Absolutely. that. It's just you know everyone has their own certain way well, of going yes, about it. For sure, yes. And let's go let's go to the point where like, what was the feeling like when you know, you heard that you made the team and that, you know, you realized that, wow, like all that hard work really did pay off. <laughs> so I don't know if you've seen how it happened, but there was actually what they did is they had my parents and my little brother and two of my original baseball coaches come in uh, in the Haluba Hall, which is the football training facility. Um, and they acted like we were going to run sprints and everything and the athletic trainer actually held me back in the East area locker room for a couple extra minutes so they could set up <laughs> uh, And I had no idea like about any of this like and I swear on that um, and So I walked in I lined up on the line with everybody else and then uh, Curtis Robeson one of our, our leaders on the team turned and handed me the jersey um, and Then you know, I got dogpiled uh, everybody was giving me high fives and hugs and stuff um, and then I went to go see my parents and everything and I've never felt a more relieving moment knowing that, you know, being who I am finally paid off because I've always stuck to who I was and it never necessarily got me, you know, the achievements on the outside of the world. Um, but now I had something to show for it. Would you say that you did everything the way that you wanted to do? Yes. I wouldn't change anything about how I went. I love, love that. Love it. I love it. Never a doubt, dude. And Never. that's that's something that's big. And like Never. that's why I like to discuss on this podcast. Like you know, some people can help you, and sometimes you just gotta take it by your own, take it in your own hands, and really just define what you're gonna exactly. do. You can get all the advice in the world, but sometimes mm -hmm. you know, it all comes down to who you really are at the end of the at exactly. the end of the day. So let's go into what has that adversity, you know becoming a walk on, you know, going through the grind. What did that adversity teach you that you think you learned and now are obtaining and acquired today? If you take care of the little things in life, you can get through anything that stands in your way. Um, don't ever try and, you know, you want to try and adapt to certain situations, but if you have a good, strong, you know, fundamental way of going about life, stick to it no matter what the situation is. Um, that's kind of how I made it through everything. No matter what was stood in my way, I just I just kept going, you know. I just kept telling myself, could be worse. You could be a regular student or something like that, you know. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but for me to be to be mentally healthy, I needed to be doing something special with my life. So. And was there any was there anyone else that kind of helped you out to get to where you are today? Exactly. Yes, and I feel bad because I felt as though in my uh, getting interviewed for the local news here in town a couple of times. I've always failed to mention him. Um, Troy Allen was my trainer since seventh grade, and I basically owe him, you know, all of my success. I I can't say that I would be even close to where I am without without his help. Um, and he was so he was my trainer for me, Tyson Cooper and David Shoemaker, um, and I can't say enough about him. So would you say that you know obviously the grind that you that you were put through and that everything that you wanted to do. Was there anything that you felt that, you know, on this podcast, we talk about the word wisdom a lot instead mm -hmm. of smart. And though you're a smart kid, I also think that you're very wise, you know, very, uh, Bendy is very humble about his grades. We'll get to that later though. But, um, you know, was there anything that you thought that you, like your trainer told you or anything that, you know, really stuck, stuck with you and, you know, seemed insignificant at the time, but now looking back on it, you're like, okay, you know, that's something bigger than I realized. Yeah, um, so I think one of the biggest things that my trainer ever did for me was when I didn't have necessarily the best showing at a Columbia baseball camp. He sent me a letter while uh, I was still on the road actually because I wasn't gonna be home for another two weeks. Um, so he, he knew that I might need some help, you know, get going. 
Um, and so he sent me a letter and I'll never forget. I have it actually posted on my bedroom wall. Uh, it says continue to align intentions with actions and your future will pave its own path. Um, and so as, you know, as I just stated earlier, don't ever change who you are, no matter what stands in your way. Um, just, you know, trust yourself that you'll get through certain things. Um, and I've looked at that quote every single day. As, as I said, I have it hanging right next to my bed on the wall. Um, that and another quote. Um, and I don't think that without that, I would have been able to get up at 5 a.m. every single day last year and push through those 6 a.m. lifts and everything like that. Um, and, you know, I owe him, as I said earlier, I owe him a lot outside of that quote, but that quote is something that sticks with me. Dude, that, that's awesome. If, if anyone's listening out there, go replay that again. Listen back, really comprehend what that need to say, because that's something that you don't learn from school. You're not going to find in a textbook. And that that's a real life lesson that you can attribute because you've done it. Right. You know, you had that experience of really not being there all the time, like not being the kid who had a spot on the team. But then eventually, you know, you're talking about waking up at 5 a.m. and going to lift. And that's something that a lot of people can't even think of yep. waking up that early and, you know, going to do what they want to do. And this is the thing. Was there, you know, that love of the game and the love of the grind, was that something that kind of pushed you through those tough times? <laughs> Absolutely. Because to be entirely honest, baseball isn't my favorite sport. Uh, that's actually, a bold state hot take from hot Benny takes. <laughs> I, I think everyone, and I think Coach Cooper even knows that too, to be honest. But uh, as I've said, basketball is like, I'd say something I devote my heart to, but what I devote my time to is baseball. Um, and it's not even necessarily the sport. It's, I absolutely love, for some reason, I've always loved working out. Like a lot of people don't necessarily like doing that. I like doing more than other people are doing. Uh, it makes me feel, you know, powerful. There's a lot to say about a kid who works hard um, and not even that, but works smartly. You know, there's, you can do a thousand reps, but if you don't take anything out of it, then those are all wasted, right? So exactly. I just the like, so how about I walk you through my day? Um, before COVID yeah. came about. Uh, so basically, five at 5, 10 a.m. my alarm would go off every single morning. We have a 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. left. I would go to classes from 9 to 1.30. I'd go to practice from 2 to 7. I would then, maybe even later sometimes, depending on if I didn't hit that well, then I'd stay and hit longer until the sun went down and you couldn't see anymore. Um, and then after that, I would do homework until about 8 to 11, uh, maybe even sometimes midnight, maybe come hang out with my friends for 30 minutes before bed just to feel like I have somewhat of a social <laughs> life uh, and you know get up and repeat and I swear to you my days were like that every single day and you just get you just get in, the, in you get fluid with it right I mean if it's if you're doing that every single day it becomes natural so did that ever did it ever hit you that you know maybe I'm doing the wrong thing or maybe that I'm you know that ever doubt of you know, am I working too hard? Am I not doing too much time towards this? Am I not delegating enough time for my friends? Does that thought ever cross your mind during that process? Yes and no. Um, I'd say in certain ways it has, but so as I said earlier, hard work, right? For those of you who are listening, you know, who are trying to achieve a dream and something like that, you need to be conscious or conscious of how long you're working for, because to be honest, Waking up every day and repeating a certain amount of things is so much better than trying to do everything in a single day, right? Because if, I mean, if you do absolutely everything in one day, you're going to be exhausted and how are you going to do it again tomorrow, right? It's so much better to, to divide up your day and do specific things, work on specific things here and there. Um, and so that way, that allowed me, since I wasn't going to be hitting, fielding, lifting every single day in my life, that gave me that extra hour that maybe I can go hang out with my friends too. So then mentally I can be healthy as well. Um, but in regards to me saying no to that question, I've always, you know, thought that my work ethic drives me, um, to be not only successful, but mentally healthy. You know, everybody has their things they escape right to you know maybe reset their brain and things like that but if i would get frustrated there's times i've driven out to my my lifting place and lifted at 1 a.m just because you know i'm angry with life and things like that uh and everyone has their own certain escapes and to me hard work is that so i can't necessarily say that i've ever felt that i'm doing something wrong so a little question for you know the hard worker that bendy is would you say that your dreams are achieved at all <laughs> mm, no I wouldn't say I'd that. I'd love that. I'd love that. Answer. I wouldn't say that. Um, 
I have bigger goals outside of sports, to be entirely honest. Um, although I might try and play professionally for a few years, I've always been a man of education. And I think by the time my senior year rolls around, I'll have a good job offer to go in, into investment management and things like that. Um, Cause I'm already applying for internships and I'm probably gonna take one this sophomore summer. Um, so to me, there's some things in life that are bigger than, bigger than sports. Uh, and you know, for me, I think that path Although achieving the goal of making the Penn State baseball team is definitely the coolest thing that I've ever done, uh, I wouldn't say that it's my end goal by any means. So let's go, let's talk about, let's start talking about school for a little bit. You know, I don't like to talk about school a lot on this podcast, but th this this person in particular, we need to talk about school for a little bit. So despite being a Division One athlete, you're a very smart kid and you're very humble about it as well. So how on earth are you balancing having a, what kind of GPA? Four. <laughs> yeah, four O GPA from Benny Franks. How on earth are you balancing your time right now? Got to make sacrifices. You know, as I, as I just said, there's bigger things in sports to me, and that's my education. Um, and that's the entire reason I wanted to play college baseball in the first place is for education. So I'm never going to let that priority out of my sight. Um, so I will never, I will very rarely go out and have fun with my friends before my homework is done. Uh, because if I do go out, I'm gonna feel bad about it the whole time. You know, I take that stuff so seriously. I'm not gonna be able to enjoy myself knowing I still got assignments I gotta do and things like that. Um, so I take care of certain things in the beginning of my day so that I can enjoy myself later on because knowing me, I don't, I don't like to mess up and stuff like that. So I, I gotta get my stuff done. Um, and so I think that explains the 4-0. The um, and I also think that I gotta give some credit to my high school. I think State High does an unbelievable job uh, especially the AP teachers preparing their students for a college type environment because honestly I might even argue that some of my high school classes were a lot harder than the classes here. Uh, obviously I'm not necessarily into my major classes yet um, but I got a lot of get, got to give a lot of credit to my teachers for teaching me how to study you know what to study uh, and just not overthink academics really. So how do you think you, you just said you not overthinking the academics mm -hmm. what do you attribute academics to like I understand that on this podcast you know I talk about wisdom not so much as book smart but uh -huh. you have both and that's something that a lot of people don't have yeah. and um this is this is the point I'm the question I'm going to ask you so in in the classroom what are you thinking about your education as a preparation for the real world and some people take that way too literally sometimes, you know, everybody be like, man, I'm never going to use pi or squares, stuff like that in real life when they're taking calculus. And I, I always try to explain to people, including my little brother, um, like, look, it's not necessarily about that exact problem. It's about designing your brain to, to think certain ways to problem solve. It has nothing to do with the actual metrics of the problem. It has all to do with aligning your brain to be able to connect dots in certain situations. And that's what that's the part of education that gets applied outside of the classroom. And as I just said, people take, you know, school way too seriously for what it is and don't understand the bigger picture behind the reasons teachers do things. And I feel like that's the worry about school. You know, mm -hmm. always I think a lot of people out there just try and work for a number. And Facts. at the Facts. end of the day that you know, do you ever think of yourself as, you know, more than a number? Because I think that's a very <laughs> important thing then. <laughs> Right. You know, you're not defined by what right. score you get on a test. Exactly. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, so, as I always like to tell myself, understand. So I try, I, I approach school material like this. Understand it for what it is and how it applies outside of the classroom. And the 4 will follow. The good grades will follow, right? You're not working to get an A on that test and then just forgetting all that information. You are trying to make that new information process into your brain to remain there. And then, you know, so it's a different way of learning. I never study to memorize, ever. I study to understand. And I'm sure all of you have probably heard your professor say that and you, you call it bull crap and stuff like that. Like, I'm just trying to get an A. But I swear to you, taking tests and things like that becomes easier if you understand the material rather than memorize it. So a thing that I would like to touch on as well is that you, you just said that, you know, you're trying to use that information outside of classroom. Mm -hmm. And on this podcast, I really want to, People understand out there that even if you hate school, you hate going to class, you hate doing homework, what do you think that school has taught you so much outside of the classroom that you're applying to your life, you know, now instead of 
yeah. five years ago. Um, so obviously, as as you're developing up through you know middle school, high school, things like that, as I said, they're just trying to get your brain ready to process problems that will occur in real life that don't actually ever look like the problems that are on your worksheet. Um, and so I think the biggest way that I've applied myself outside of school would have to be uh, my participation in a mutual fund um, where we managed $100,000 in New York Stock Exchange. Um, so that's, uh, that's the club here, right? Uh, so there is one here at Penn State, but it was actually, it's a different one here in town for State High. Okay. It's related to State High, but it's actually like, it's outside of the, mm -hmm. I guess you would say the contract. Yeah. Um, so we're able to operate on our own terms. Um, so here at Penn State, they had the Nittany Line Fund, and I think they trade over $8 million in assets, whereas we had 100000 because it's more of a high school type level, mm -hmm. uh, but we're definitely growing. Um, and so that's the biggest way I've ever applied myself outside of uh, the curriculum, uh, because obviously I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say that investing is a, is a class that you can take everywhere in, in the United States, especially in high school. Um, and so you just take what you learned about, you know, problem solving, you know, mathematical comparisons, things like that. And it shows you that you can actually use your high school knowledge, let alone college, to be applied to certain life situations. And when you know you make money out of it. That's so, cool. so throughout the podcast, we've, I, it, it's insane about the amount of things that you do. Has the thought ever crossed your mind that, you know, you think you're doing a little bit too much or is that just the way you operate? I'd say yes, it has. I think I did more in high school with my days than I do now. Um, wow. Believe it or not. And here's why. I could continue to do as much as I always did, but, you know, to be entirely honest, if it wasn't for a special, you know, my, like my special group of friends, uh, I would have, I would have had some really rough moments mentally, uh, including, you know, uh, my ex-girlfriend, like, you know, things moved on, but she was there for me a lot. And as well as my parents, I, thankfully I had, a, I had a good support group, but I was always doing so much that I never actually sat back and thought about how I'm doing mentally. I was always so focused on my goals and something I think I do a lot better at Penn State. And I think it just shows my maturity is I take care of my mental health. Uh, a lot of people kind of just breeze over mental health and you're like, oh, it doesn't apply to me, like depression, blah, blah, blah. Like I've never had anything like that. But I can definitely tell when I get, you know, down on myself and things. But I think that's just a product of how much pressure is placed on Division One athletes nowadays. Um, and especially the pressure I put on myself to do well in school as well. Um, and so, you know, I've been taking a lot of walks, a lot of hikes at night with my dog, things like that. Uh, just to distract me from the hard things in life and realize that, you know, you only have one shot on this planet. So you better enjoy it and not spend your time just working all the time, right? So... You know, I, I hope that everyone out there just got chills like I did when you said that, because I feel like that, you know, when you say that out loud, it means a lot more than when you think it in your head, you know, if For you, sure. and when it comes down to this, we're given like one in what, 400 trillion, some mm. crazy odd to be put on this spinning rock. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're here for a reason. Oh, you have a purpose, sure, yes. 100%. Has that... So let's go back to mental health. I think that's something that's very overlooked. And even very. in a high school environment, you know, I know that there's a lot of options out there to try and help people with that. But I think it comes with more maturity to realize that you need to kind of worry about that as well. So you were saying that like you go on things with like you go on hikes with your dog, mm -hmm. you do certain things and take your mind off of things. Mm -hmm. How has that changed in, you know, before when you weren't so much focused on your mental health compared to now when, you know, you think about it a little bit more and you treat yourself like you should. Mm -hmm. It's all about living in the moment and understanding no matter what the situation is, what is actually going on around you. So, you know, I, I still went on hikes with my dog and things like that in high school, but I would just take, I would never stop and smell the roses. That's my dad's favorite quote. <laughs> Uh, stop and smell the roses. It just means slow down, understand where you are in life right now, the moment that you're in, uh, and don't take anything for granted because, I mean, now that I'm here at Penn State, I honestly can say that I miss high school a lot, and I know a lot of college students don't have the ability to say that, and I, I truly think that that's sad um, because this, the biggest thing that I've learned mentally is to just slow down 
and appreciate where you are in life because there's a lot of people out there with a lot of different problems that maybe don't necessarily apply to my life and that you know that's just me being fortunate so uh, you need to spend your your perspective yeah not everyone's given the opportunity to come here do like do what you do do what anyone else does and Mm -hmm. at the end of the day like you know i i said it on the first podcast that i made i said if you you know put your phone down for five minutes and actually looked at a tree do anything you know like take a big deep breath for once instead of worrying about social media what someone else has to say about you has the thought ever crossed your mind that you know you're worried about someone else's opinion about who you are or do you feel like now that you know you've matured and understand that you know you're happy with the person that you are today look since i was probably old enough to speak my dad has been hammering home that you cannot care about what other people think about you um people would look at me as my schedule my busy schedule in high school and they'd be like, oh, he never parties, he never does this, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's just wasting his life away. Like, I I could not give less of a crap about what other people think about me. Thank you for and not that. Is, <laughs> that is a really uh, positive and powerful thing for a human being to have is the ability to trust in themselves and what they're doing above others' opinions. You know, because everyone, I, I personally think that if you don't have any critics in life, then you're not, you're not living life special enough. You're not doing something special enough. Because the reason people have opinions on you is because they wish they were you. And they wish they were doing things you were doing. And, so. everyone, and someone's always going to try and, you know, knock exactly. you out of a peg. But that's not, you know, yeah. if you're happy with who you are. Exactly. Then go with if, it. Man. If you want to do anything in life and it makes you happy. Go with it. Go do it. Exactly. Like, don't don't worry about what someone else has to say about, you know. Oh well, goodness. I think that's I think that's stupid. What mm-hmm. you just said, you know. I, I mean, I got... The same thing here. Like, you know, sometimes I don't like going out on the weekends. And right. my friends are like, well, what are you doing? I said, you know, I'd rather sit in my room and do homework exactly. or try and, like, you know, work. I think that's something that you do very well. And I think that a lot of people out there need to understand is that I think you have the concept of, you know, work hard, play later. Oh, yes. Instead of play now and work later. Mm-hmm. And do you feel that that has helped you, you know, kind of get through the times where, you know, people are out there partying and you're sitting in your room trying to figure out how to do something else. Absolutely. So I actually read, I don't know if you know, but Joe Batista here in town, he's the one who got the deal from the Pagulas to get the Penn State ice hockey rink built. Um, So I actually read his book and his son is my best friend. I've grown up with him. Um, And my favorite quote from that is the, or it had to do with the ability to delay gratification. Um, you know, it's a, fa- it's a fancy way of saying work now, play later. Right. Um, and so the, the ability for me to put all the fun aside at certain moments, it doesn't mean that I haven't had fun with my life, but you need to understand when and where it is the time to have fun and when and where it is the time to work and, you know, get your stuff done because it's all, you know, obviously the end goal is retirement and things like that, but I'm not even thinking about that right now. Like I'm thinking about day think about that. day by day delaying gratification. And as I said, I get my stuff done early in my day so I can be mentally okay with having fun later on in that day. You know, the big statement that I've heard from a lot of people is that, you know, that are these millionaires and billionaires and, you know, have a, a tremendous amount of net worth is that, you know, <sighs> They worked hard at a young age and, you know, they probably got made fun of and all that stuff. And Mm -hmm. that, you know, now that they look back on it and they said, I wouldn't change anything. Would you have changed anything that you've done through, you know, high school towards now, you know, looking back on it now, start, because I don't, I'm not a person who tries to look into the future. I feel like that's, you know, you're worrying about things that you can't even control yet. Exactly. But is there anything that you look back on the past and you would say to yourself five years ago that now you know, really would hit home to, you know, you're going to be okay. Yes. Was there anything like that would cross your mind? Absolutely. Um, I think I took myself too seriously sometimes in high school, not in terms of like relation, like friends and relationships and things like that, more just like with sports. Um, but I'd say the biggest lesson that I've learned is it's not about how hard you work. It's about how smart you work. Um, and so I'll speak athletically here because, you know, that's where I have most of my experience in. Um, there's no reason to go out and do 5,000 reps of something a day 
if you're not thinking about why you're doing that, if you're not thinking about how your body feels, why, how, like when you're doing that, uh, if you're not thinking about why you might be missing a certain target, things like that, you know, so many people will go out there and they'll just hit and hit and hit and hit and hit as if that's going to change anything. Like your swing doesn't just magically fix itself yeah. because you take more swings, right? You got to look into the science behind certain things. You know, the reasoning, the biggest thing that coach Cooper always says is why he'll just ask us why seven times until we actually come up with an answer. You've got to understand why you're doing something for it to actually work. You know, I think something that comes with maturity as well is that, you know, you have to, everything's not how it is on the surface. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to look a little bit deeper into things. And how do you think that's changed? Do you feel like you're starting to, you know, you're 20 years old, 19 years old. Is there anything that now you look back on and be like, wow, I wish I kind of like paid attention a little bit more or so much as I ask, like ask another question mm-hmm. that you thought of, you know, five minutes later and now you're never going to ask that. Mm-hmm. You're never going to be able to ask that question. Yeah. Um, I'd say probably the biggest thing that I look back on that I wish I did a little bit differently. I think I've made it pretty clear in the podcast thus far is just slowing down and you know, telling your friends that you're thankful for them and things like that because now here I am in high school and I've got a lot of good buddies who went elsewhere for college and I haven't talked to them in like six months and you know I really do miss them like and things like that and if I could have my high school so obviously high school is what's behind me now if I could have my high school career back I think the biggest thing is I'd like day by day I never would have taken anything for granted with the time that I spent with my friends. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't realize until it happens. You know, that thing that, Mm -hmm. you know, something goes away that you want to really have back. So to anyone listening out there, you're sitting in your room, just, you know, doing nothing. You're on your phone, just scrolling, like just scrolling through Instagram. Go do something. Go talk to your friends. You know, go call your mom. Go call your dad. Go call your grandpa. I feel like those things that, you know, you're not going to be able to cherish forever. Well, one day it all goes away. Don't think about that so much. Cherish the moment that you have right now. And that's something that, you know, I've been told from a lot of people who are older than me. And I feel like I'd, same way, would you feel mm-hmm. that? Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like that's something that you kind of learn with age. And, you know, being able to pick up on that now rather than before it's too late is something that's really big. And, yeah you think about it and you kind of don't learn the lesson until it actually happens. But mm-hmm. if someone else is telling you now, you know, let that sink in for a second, right. really understand those words, you know, cherish every moment instead of, you know, just worrying about what other people have to think and all of that. So, yeah. So, uh, one of the things you said early on, you talked about in your previous podcast, putting the phone down, something that bothers me the most in this, you know, on this planet is how people, They'll go, you know, to a certain uh, environment, like really cool, uh, what are they called? I'm blanking. The historical national parks, things like that. Just like any... Like any, anything cool, like yeah. ball dropping at uh, Times Square, things like that. Everyone is recording it on their phones rather than looking and seeing it through their own eyes. And that just absolutely blows me away that people do that because you only live once. See life through your eyes. Don't see it through a screen. I, know, I just felt I needed to comment on that one. You know, your here. grandparents didn't have, exactly. didn't have a phone. You know, everything's they're doing through, all right. Yeah, they're doing and everything's through their memory. Absolutely. Memories. And that helps you, you know, live in the moment a little bit That's more rather saying. than, you know, so what? You're going to relive that picture Be where like, a are. year from now on your snap memories or something. You Absolutely. know, at, at the end of the day, you'll have that memory. You, you won't remember, you know, that video. You remember the mm-hmm. people that you're with. You remember, right. you know, what was the weather like that day? Like what happened after, what happened before? That's where the real memories are made Absolutely. in the end. So let's get off this topic for a second. I want to ask you the question of, you know, what makes you, what's the drive behind you working as hard as you do? My mental health. Um, I don't feel good about myself if I'm not working hard. Uh, as I said earlier, I get down and I start to not like who I am if I'm not spending every single day doing something productive. And that can be unhealthy to a point. Obviously, you need to be have the ability to sit back and relax. But what keeps me going and just keep driving, you know, it's not even necessarily like, oh, getting better at baseball or like, oh, getting a 4-0. Like, 
doing those things is what keeps my own brain happy. And for others, that's just absolutely the opposite. Like they hate going to practice. And that's okay. That. And that like, yeah, like, but you just need to understand like what your purpose is in life is specific, specific to every single person. Um, and for me working hard, my, that's my purpose in life is that's what keeps me going is working hard. Um, it's kind of weird to say it, but working hard keeps me working hard. <laughs> That's basically the most basic way to say it. That's who I am. And when, you know, I talk about the, I'm going to bring up the topic about the master path, you know, that it's not a straight line. There's pitfalls, oh. there's trenches. What happens to you when you go into that trench? Is, do you realize it? And then you, what drives you out of that trench? Because it happens to everyone, Absolutely. no matter what you do. Yes. Um, so I've had probably, I'd say four trenches that in the last two years. Uh, the last two years have been absolutely unbelievable in terms of uh, swings up and just as far down. Um, so I'll just name them off. You know, realizing I'm not going to get an offer was the first one. Number two, getting rejected at 13 out of the 14 schools I applied to. Number three, uh, losing my, my dog that I'd grown up with since uh, I was in third grade, we lost her to cancer and that was the hardest thing that I've ever seen. And then probably number four, uh, ending my high school relationship like that I was in. Um, those are the four biggest setbacks that I've ever had in terms of success and mental health. Um, and to be honest, what got me out of most of those was distracting myself by working hard. As I said, that's what drives me. Working hard makes me work harder. Like that is how I got out of those moments. So when I realized I wasn't going to get an offer, I said, hmm, okay, how am I gonna do something successful from here? So that's why I went, retook the SAT, the ACT, I studied for all of them. You know, my GPA had always been good, so I, luckily I, I already had that set to go and ready. Um, so then I, you know, I attacked the idea of going to an Ivy League as a regular student or another just good business school. Um, so I, I absolutely gave that my all. But you know, it doesn't work out, get rejected everywhere. I'm just like, yeah. damn, like, how am I supposed to be successful here? Um, and just, you know, things like that. And then so Coach Cooper says, hey, why don't you try and walk on? And instead of me moping, being like, man, I'm going to Penn State, like that was my safety school. Like I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna make the absolute most of this. And to say the least, I think I have so far. Yeah, just, why not? I just can't stop. Take, yeah, don't ever let an opportunity slip by. That's my biggest thing. And when you were in those, you know, when you were in those trenches, I'm sure like that's everyone has those bad times oh, yes. that they go through, you know, what whether it is whatever you're going through. Was there ever the time that you felt like what was me or that, you know, you know, like, oh, my God, I'm down. Like, I'm never going to get out of this, you know, but you do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Has that thought ever crossed your head that, you know, like. I'm going down because usually it happens with the first mm -hmm. time that anything bad happens mm -hmm. with someone in their life. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to say it was coming to Penn State, believe it or not. Really? Uh, that was the worst. Obviously, I'm not going to say worst situation, but like in terms of my happiness and con being confused on who I was, was coming to Penn State. Uh, and people are like, oh, you only live eight minutes away. Like you can easily go home. Like. It doesn't matter. I absolutely love my family to death. And like, I still go home every night for a couple hours just to see him. Uh, that was really, really hard for me. And so on top of that, I was going to what was supposed to be my safety school. And it's absolutely no disrespect to Penn State. As I said earlier, it's just the fact that I had lived here my whole life. I wanted to go elsewhere. Yeah. New so experience. Like, here I am. I'm not playing. I'm not, or, so technically I was attempting to walk on to that point, but I'm still not on the team. So I was like, here I am, I'm not an actual team member. Here I am not going to any of my dream schools. And now I'm out of the house. I've lost a lot of my best friends. I literally only had uh, two at the time at Penn State and that's uh, my best friends from high school. Um, and I was like, I just don't even know. But a lot of nightly conversations with my father um, a lot of in-person conversations with my mother, for sure, when I would go home, um, got me not even through that, just got me through the day. And, you know, we talk about taking things day by day, and I absolutely am a believer in that. Um, and then, you know, I told you eventually I got some confidence going. I met some new people. I realized that my life was going to be okay. You know, if you're doing the right things, just 
just trust that life will it'll work out it doesn't matter what you're going through now if you do something about it mm -hmm. you can always get out of it. absolutely and if it doesn't you try mm -hmm. that's a big thing if anyone out there is you know going through a rough time and just you know really down on themselves take it from take it from someone else you know Bendy's sitting here at the top of the world right now, even though he doesn't want to admit it, that, you know, he worked his tail off to get where he is, and he, he's human. Mm -hmm. All of us are. I've made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're not, no one's perfect. Get out there, if you mess up, what happens, Bendy? Are you okay the next day? Oh, yeah, I'm still here. You know, you're you, still here. You're still here. <laughs> you know, you got such a, I, I want to make the point that, you know, Sometimes that you know it doesn't matter about that dollar amount in your bank account. Go do something. You know, you, there's one thing that you can't buy back, and that's the concept of time. Absolutely. You know those conversations that you have with your friends. Cherish that a little bit more. You're not going to get that conversation mm -hmm. back. Make the most of the opportunity that you're given, and that's something that you know I think that you did a really good job about. I mean. Heck, you didn't want to go here, and, 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 now, and now you know you said it a lot. And now I'm like, I'm processing in my head. I'm sitting here like, like, wow, you know, he he really did something, yeah. even though you know you may. I don't want to say make the best out of like the bad situation. Oh, because it, it. it's yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, a lot of people only know me for my success, and they have absolutely no idea what goes on behind the scenes and what I actually feel in life, you know, and what my actual goals are and and were what they were, uh, but obviously those have changed now. And that's the thing where I, I like to talk about empathy. You know, mm -hmm. that person that's having a bad day, that you can do something a little nice. Open mm -hmm. the door for them, you know? You know, just smile. You know, that thing of smiling at someone and their mood changes, it happens. It, like, it's scientifically yes. possible, right, Ben? Yeah. yeah. Smart guy, 4.0 GPA in the room. He knows way more than I do, but mm -hmm. um, that's, really... that's what... <laughs> He just want, I just want to make the point that, you know, you know, use the time more than you use anything else. Make mm -hmm. something out of your day. Go, go do something. I say, I say, I know I say it a lot, but you know, I, I truly mean it. Go, go do something. You don't have that much you know, at the grand scheme of things. I'm sure that one day when we're all grandparents or, you know, we're 70 years old that you won't look back at that picture and think, you know, like, oh my God, like. Well, that was cool. You're going to think yeah. about who you were with. Absolutely. You know, what happened after. Things like that. And that's just my opinion. I mean, if you have a different one, that's okay. There's no disrespect. I'm not disrespecting right. anything that you say. That's okay. And in a world with a bunch of different opinions, everyone has their own. It's not that we're wrong. All right. And, you know, I, before I wrap up the show, I need to get off of that topic. But uh, <laughs> before we wrap up the show, I asked Bendy to bring in a quote that, you know, Kind of, he lives by, you know, what he does when he's down, you know, when when he reads that quote. So, Bendy, what, what's the quote that you brought in today? I said it once and I'll say it again. It's continue to align intentions with actions and your future will pave its own path. And now, you know, looking back on it, when you were just trying to walk on a team, did you read that quote a lot and mm -hmm. what did it mean to you? then yes so i highlighted it it was just one sentence in the letter at the time i took a highlighter to it i framed it and it sat right next to my dorm bedroom and so yes i read it all the time and what did it mean to me well my intentions in life as i've said you know i have big big goals for myself and i think the reason people support me for who i am is because of my actions and i think that this quote basically just summed up absolutely everything that I needed to combine with my personal abilities, which is my actions, my hard work, things like that, um, to just get my mental health wrapped around the idea that my future will be just fine if I keep doing what I'm doing. I love it, man. So before, you know, I turn off the mice, Benny goes home, does some more homework, spends some time with his, with his <laughs> friends. Um, you know, I just want to thank you for having you on the show, man. You know, I hope that someone out there, you know, was inspired by the words that you said and got some insight. If they're going through a rough time, you know, that it could be like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be over. You know, it doesn't last forever. And, 
you know, this is just the time, you know, tell the listeners out there and the people viewing this on YouTube where to follow you and, you know, anything else that you want to say to yeah. conclude the show. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Ronan. I think that this idea of a podcast is absolutely amazing. It's a very overlooked type of media, um, and I think it's really cool what you're doing for the people. Um, but yeah, I mean, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Bendy Franks, but that, that's literally the only handle that I am <laughs> active on because, you know, I... I like doing other things with my life other than social media. As I said, I like living life where I am and being where my feet are rather than through a screen. So thank you very much. Dude, anytime. I can't wait to have you back on here, you know, and whatever you do in life because, you know, it, you're going to be successful straight up. So to anyone out there listening, I just want to say have a great rest of your day and just keep on keeping on, everyone.